Hi everyone, today we have a comparison between the Oppo Find X7 Ultra and of course the Vivo X100 Ultra. Now do keep in mind in this comparison the Oppo I didn't have for a very long time and therefore limited use and therefore in this comparison I don't have all the shots that you would normally see in all the different situations simply because I do have that limited time and they needed it back. Either way, let's discuss the Oppo Find X7 Ultra versus the Vivo X100 Ultra and see which one comes out on top. Now this one took me a bit and I won't make it as in depth as some others that I've done because of how long it took me to get the opportunity to test out the Oppo Find X7 Ultra and seeing how old it already is compared to some other phones out there. But before that, let's look at the basic hardware and specifications for both. The Vivo X100 Ultra comes of course with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and of course the same counts for the Oppo Find X7 Ultra. We get a 6.78 inch AMOLED display with a refresh rate of 120Hz with a peak brightness of 3000 nits. For the Oppo we have a 6.82 inch AMOLED display with 120Hz as well and a peak brightness of 4500 nits. For memory and RAM it's very similar. We get from 256GB up to 1TB of memory for the Vivo where we get 256GB up to 512GB for the Oppo. With RAM for both we have 12GB up to 16GB of RAM. But now we get to the part that matters most for us, the camera hardware. Both have a 1 inch main sensor, well technically the Vivo has a 0.98 inch sensor size. But both of course have a 23mm equivalent and both a 50 megapixel sensor and both have an f-stop of 1.8. We get a 200 megapixel sensor on the Vivo with an f-stop of 2.7 and a huge sensor size of 1 over 1.4 inches and it's an optical zoom of 85mm equivalent. With the Oppo we have a bit of a different situation because we do have 4 lenses and 2 of them are a periscope. We get a 50 megapixel periscope with an f-stop of 2.6 and a rather large 1 over 1.56 inch sensor size as well with a 65mm equivalent optical zoom. The second periscope is a 50 megapixel sensor as well with an f-stop of 4.3 and a smaller 1 over 2.51 inch sensor size and a zoom equivalent of 135 millimeters. For the ultra wide we have a 50 megapixel sensor on the Vivo with an f-stop of 2.2 and a 1 over 2 inch sensor size and 40 millimeters equivalent. For the Oppo we have a 50 megapixel sensor as well with an f-stop of 2.0 and a sensor size of 1 over 1.95 inches and 40 millimeters equivalent as well. The Vivo allows recording all the way up to 8K and 30 frames per second, where the Oppo is at 4K and 60 frames per second. But of course, with the Vivo you can also record 4K 120 frames per second. So with the specs out of the way, let's look how these two compare. Do keep in mind, because of the limited time that I had, I have limited video recording comparing these two, so most of this will be stills. So when using size natural you will see that from time to time shots look pretty similar in colors like this one. Just a bit more contrast on the Oppo itself and of course a bit more sharpening on the Oppo as well. Though I will say I like that bit more contrast on the green of the car itself on the Oppo. Now in this shot I use textured on the Vivo to give a bit more contrast. In this kind of situation that just simply works better. You will see that both have a very similar look yet again but a decent amount more saturation on the Oppo. I would say it's really on the edge of over sharpening but just a little bit below it. Comparing these two though I would say that Vivo has my preference because of that softer look. Now this shot while looking at it quickly again very similar in terms of result out of these two. There are some things to note though. The Vivo has a bit more contrast on the chandelier but the Oppo has a bit more of that on the ceiling itself. Combined with the sharpening making the design pattern stand out more but both having amazing details in the shot itself. Now back to natural for the Vivo, and here again both are very similar in colors, just a tad more contrast on the Oppo and it's slightly darker because of the lower EV that I had it on in this shot, again looking very comparable to each other with this flower shot. And in general I would say with both of them, when it comes to the main sensor they are very comparable. Looking at shots between these two you will notice that Oppo definitely has more sharpening going on without really going overboard but sometimes I feel like it's a little bit too much and a slight bit more contrast between the shots as well. In colors they look very similar in the shots itself where the Oppo does have a little bit more saturation on the shots itself and in some shots quite a bit more saturation. And I think in terms of main sensor they are both stellar, but of course preference does come to play.
now we are at the open air museum in Arnhem, starting with again the Harry Potter car. Now with the Vivo, it is all natural. If you want a bit more contrast, of course, use that tax ship mode on the Vivo, and both will look very similar because even now they do look very similar, apart from the contrast that is more on the Oppo. I know this shot comes down to preference a lot, but I really like the much darker shadows on the Oppo here, where if you use natural on the Vivo itself, you get shadows like these. But I will say the greens on the Oppo are a bit odd. Not only are they more saturated, but the color itself is a little bit off as well. Looking at this windmill shot, the contrast again is an ISO on the Oppo for me. And that's because that has my preference, of course. But I use natural on the Vivo because of, of course, the comparison that I have with the iPhone 16 Pro. Link in the description where you can check that out. It's not even close between the iPhone 16 Pro and the Vivo X100 Ultra. Either way, when it comes to the shot itself, I also noticed that there is quite a bit more sharpening going on when it comes to the Oppo. When it comes to the Vivo though, I will say the yellow is a bit more saturated than it should be. Now it's time to move to ultra wide and in this first ultra wide shot again look at how similar the shots are in terms of colors just the difference between the contrast between the two but apart from that very very similar though i will give oppo some points here the details combined with the sharpening does give a great result for that oppo where the vivo is a bit softer outside again i feel like repeating what i said in a previous shot but the contrast is more noticeable here on the oppo in this case and just a bit more sharpening going on on the Oppo, just like before. In this shot though, it's Vivo that has a bit more contrast to the shot. The water fountain slightly stands out more in comparison, giving more depth to the shot itself compared to what you get on the Oppo. So in some cases, the ultra wide colors are very similar, just like the main sensor. I feel like they're simply very comparable, but the difference comes down to mostly preference in these kinds of situations, with the same story that I had before. I think that the Vivo looks a little bit more cooled down, where the Oppo can look a bit warmer in terms of its approach, which is more noticeable outside. But in general, with details, both are very similar, and it really comes down to what you like in terms of the results itself, and therefore I would say it really comes down to your preference, the thing that really matters. So let me know which has your preference so far. So let's zoom into some shots and of course with this first shot there's quite a bit of difference in color profile. The grass itself is better and closer to reality on the Vivo but the windmill yellow is closer to reality on the Oppo. I will however say when zooming into the shot itself the Oppo looks very artificial. It looks like a painting where on the Vivo it looks like a photograph and it's a really weird effect that you get here on the Oppo. Zooming in a bit more. And here I would say that the Vivo has fixed a bit of that color and is closer to reality, but again also far more detailed, with the Oppo again having parts that look like a painting, more noticeable in the trees itself. Though again I really like the contrast that we get on the Oppo, so looking at the shot in full I would say I like the contrast better, but zoom in and realistically here it's not even close. In this setup again the Oppo loses some of that painting effect that the other two before had quite a bit. But it also loses some of that contrast of the color on the windmill itself. And while part of it still looks drawn out, I think the shot looks fine. Apart from that though, I think the Vivo looks more like it should be. 
Now again zooming into the shot, again a big difference in contrast and that is something you can get more of on texture mode on the Vivo itself but this is shot in size natural. Of course using the leaves to get some depth in the shot and have some focus to the subject that I'm actually shooting. Now I will say there's a big difference in color but the biggest difference is when zooming in. The Oppo is much sharper but not more detailed. That is easily won by the Vivo with much more details retained compared to what we get on the Oppo itself. Now zooming in a lot more, again notice the difference in contrast, but also notice the highlights. I think Vivo has a bit more overexposure at parts and therefore loses some of the details in those sections. I will also say that now it holds up better against the Vivo when it comes to this Oppo. Yes it's more artificial, look at some parts of the shot itself with some softening and sharpening going on and again a little bit of the paint effect. But in terms of effect on the wood itself, it's much better visible compared to what you get on the Vivo. So when it comes to the zoom capabilities, I think the Oppo is capable of creating some good shots. If you push it or you zoom into the shot itself however, you start noticing why it loses out on the Vivo. Be it because of the details, the artificial look, the painting effect or simply the way that it processes the whole images. I think realistically the zoom capabilities on the Vivo are a decent amount better than what you get on the Oppo. Now at the end, when it comes to the comparison between the Oppo Find X7 Ultra and the Vivo X100 Ultra, there are some differences in style. But when it comes to colors, often they're quite close, especially when it comes to the main sensor itself. You will find that the images on the Oppo are a little bit warmer compared to what you get on the Vivo itself and of course a little bit more contrast, but that's because most of the time I was using size natural. You can get a little bit more of that contrast in the shot itself if you are actually using of course texture mode or you simply adjust the slider on of course the Vivo to add more contrast. That being said, when it comes to the main camera, I think they're comparable. When it comes to the ultra wide, I think they're comparable and it really comes down to preference there. When it comes to the capabilities of zooming in, this includes zooming in with the main sensor itself, so you're cropping into the sensor itself, there it's not close. Here clearly I think that the Vivo is beating the Oppo Find X7 Ultra. Zoom capabilities simply are better on the Vivo. Especially if you look at some shots where it looks like a painting on the Oppo. This is simply not comparable in those kinds of situations where the Oppo is really struggling to find out what it's actually doing with the processing itself. That being said, if you don't zoom into the shots itself and you look at it at a, from a full perspective, there I think the shots look still really good. Just don't zoom in too much. Either way, this comparison is purely daytime. I will be making a low light comparison as well, depending a little bit on how this video is doing as well. But when it comes to this Oppo Find X7 Ultra versus the Vivo X100 Ultra, let me know what you think, which has your preference. And of course, I also really want to thank my members. I really appreciate the support. It really does mean a lot for a channel like mine because it is of course quite a bit smaller and recently I had to buy the OnePlus 13. That poll was really close for a really long time, but at the end, the OnePlus 13 won, and that is 800 euros. This channel makes about 400 a month. Either way, <laughs> thank you members for joining. If you want to become a member, you can, but you don't have to. Watching the video in full or sharing it on all those platforms that you know really helps out the video. Engagement really helps out the video, so if you can do that, I really would appreciate it. Because videos like comparison, they take a little bit. Either way, I do hope that you enjoyed this video and of course talk to you guys in the next.